Apple Mac Studio. Apple website has all the info listed well enough. This is a video about my personal approach on the Apple Mac Studio, which is very different to that of many other reviewers with real life examples. You are about to watch a Grammaticus Macedon video. The Mac Studio is a new powerful tool for studio work and content creators. I am a content creator and among all other things, I like to do videos and photographs. When it comes to money, I try not to be cheap with creative tools. So, am I a good candidate for the Apple Mac Studio? Will I buy it? Let's find out. If I was to buy the Apple Mac Studio, I would buy the one with the M1 Ultra processor for heavy 8K RAW rendering and denoise. I don't have the Apple Mac Studio in my possession, but I have the M1 Max on my laptop, which is half of that of the M1 Ultra. I assume no emergent properties from the merge of the two chips that make the M1 Ultra. I don't have a beefy Mac Pro to compare, but I have a Hackintosh with two hardware overclocked and liquid cooled AMD 6800 XT graphics cards, which could yield similar results to that of a Mac Pro. Lastly, I have the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the i9 processor and the 5500M AMD GPU, which was one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful MacBook, two years ago. Even if I had the Mac Studio, it would take a few firmware updates to be optimized and achieve the best possible results. Thus, I will only mention the best possible scenario of double the performance. But, according to some reviews from YouTubers like Max Yuryev, there is a firmware limitation to the power supply causing throttling and it performs way less than double. Let's take a look at a video creation example. I have to denoise and debare my 8K RAW video from my Canon R5. This is an extremely heavy process for a computer to handle. I did set up the latest version of the NIT video denoising plugin, which is fully compatible with the Monterey version of the OS and the M1 processors. The best possible configuration for each machine in terms of the CPU and GPU processing combination was selected by me. The videos were exported with REC709 SDR, which is standard dynamic range, but later when I tried exporting in HDRPQ, I had the same results. Exporting in 8K DCI ProRes HQ, we see a stuttering 2.5 frames per second on the Hackintosh, 1 to 1.5 frames per second for the MacBook Pro Max and 0 frames per second for the Intel MacBook. The Hackintosh finished in 1 minute and 21 seconds, the Intel MacBook finished in 13 minutes and 8 seconds and the M1 Mac finished in 2 minutes and 12 seconds. Thus, in the best possible scenario, the Mac Studio could have finished in 1 minute and 6 seconds, which outperforms my Hackintosh, theoretically. Exporting in 4K DCI, the Hackintosh had a problem, but after resetting the denoiser, it did 4.5 to 5 frames per second. The M1 MacBook did 3 to 3.5 frames per second, and the Intel Mac did 0.5 to 1 frames per second. The Hackintosh finished in 42 seconds, the Intel MacBook Pro finished in 3 minutes and 41 seconds, and the M1 Max MacBook finished in 1 minute and 3 seconds. Thus the Mac Studio could have outperformed my Hackintosh. When it comes to noise, I can guarantee you that the M1 Macs are extremely quiet compared to any other computers I have ever used. No noticeable noise was present. On contrary, my 16-inch MacBook Pro with the Intel i9 processor make fan noise while my Hackintosh with its 9 fans make it impossible for me to record while it's on. So the M1 Mac Studio is top for recording music or if you have it in your bedroom and you sleep, its fans will not bother you. Electricity prices keep going up like crazy these days and with global warming, people start realizing the importance of lowering power consumption. The M1 chips are very efficient and they can save you lots of money in the long run. Especially if you often let your computers do heavy work like rendering videos overnight. How about gaming? Apple seems to hate gamers. Although Macs have an extreme power for games, both the Mac Studio and my 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro have an old HDMI 2.0 port instead of the HDMI 
2.1 port. This means that I cannot play my game with 4K resolution and 120 frames per second, or 120 Hz, on my 48 OLED display. Is that a big deal? It can be, especially for people who play RPG games and the graphics are moving very fast in front of them. A possible solution could have been a Thunderbolt to HDMI 8K cable, but according to their description, these cables work with Windows computers and when it comes to Mac, they only deliver 4K 60Hz. That's what they mentioned there. Also, the new expressive displays announced together with the Mac Studio have a maximum refresh rate of 60Hz. I guess Macs don't have the 120fps yet. Thus, the Mac Studio is good for gamers who suffice playing games in 60Hz and don't care about the 120Hz experience. How about streaming? Being quiet and having lots of Thunderbolt ports, you can connect your video capture devices straight into your computer without adapters and do a cool web show. What you cannot do is use the Unreal Engine environment, which is something that I will not analyze here and it's very advanced for 99% of all viewers. How about all these unique Windows programs that you cannot find on the Macs and they are exclusive to Windows? Well, you can use an emulation program like Parallels, install Windows and you should be happy enough to find out that most of your programs work. But there are certain games that are reported not to work as well as some 3D programs like iClone which from my past experience refuse to open in a virtualization environment. Another, let's say, problem with uh, the new Macs is the SD card reader, which does not accept my new V90 cards, it only accepts the old cards. The V90 SD cards are professional cards, very fast, and they are used by many professionals. It is not a big deal since you can connect it with a dangle, but still, it's worth to mention. So, will I buy the Mac Studio? Right now, I don't consider it, but I might in the future because I have some machines that already do the work for me. This is my first tech review video and I would like to see some subscriptions down below. I hope I was helpful and thank you for watching.